we're just practicing with volume fans today. Nothing special. I got some new tweezers and I figured I'd try them out because I get so used to getting comfortable with a certain pair that whenever I get new ones, I just can never use them. So I figured I'd bring them home and give them a little test run before I try to use them on some clients because then it takes me forever to do a set if I try to use a new pair of tweezers. So I'm just making some fans, practicing using new tweezers. They're from iLevel Lab. These are the new Omnia tweezers. I just got these. I really, really like them. I just, I can't get them to work for me just yet. I might have to file them down a little bit, but I really, really like them. These are my favorite ones so far. I have a couple pairs of these. They're the easy, I believe it's called the easy fanning tweezer from iLevel Lab. So one of the things, So one of the things you want to remember when you're doing your little fans is if you do the shimmy method like I do, you wiggle back and forth. You don't squeeze very hard when you're wiggling. So you have some tension release and then once you're done and you have your fan where you want it, then you're going to give it some more pressure, some more tension, and then pull it off the strip. So you don't want to keep them squeezed too hard the whole time because then you won't be able to move them back and forth. So I know that's one of the hardest things people have an issue with is they can't get them to wiggle right. And if they do, they can't get it to come off the strip in one piece. They end up getting a bunch of little hairs left behind or their fan goes crazy, which sometimes, you know, you can actually fix your fan and glue if it does go crazy. So there's nothing wrong with that. So here's the pinch method that I'm doing that I went over with a, a while back. The thing with the pinch method is you have to make sure that while you're pinching, you release the tension in your tweezer. You can't squeeze it so hard. You just want to release, not squeeze as hard while you're, while you're pinching. So you're going to do that at the same time. So grab that chunk. So we're going to pinch here and release on the tweezer and it opens it right up. Makes the base very, very skinny and the fan is perfect. So there we go. Then they have the one with the side where they pull it up just a little bit. Take the tips, fan them over. Go in and grab it. Pull it up. See this one went, well that's no biggie. Popped right back over. Dip it. Give it a little and drop it on the lash. Then we have, I don't know if it's called the Lonely Lash or the Standalone. I can't remember. I don't go by names. Sorry. Take it off. Put it back on. Ooh, that was a big disaster. It's another thing. Nothing ever goes perfect. I know some people make videos where they make it look like they do everything right the first time. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to make it real because everybody struggles when it comes to making these things. Everybody. There we go. And I just totally screwed that up. See, there we go. I've done that a hundred times already at least and I still screwed up. I'm not used to my hand being this long. I'm used to it being on a forehead so this is different for me. So let's try it one more time. Mm, you still owe me, kid. Sorry, my son's trying to get, me to get me to buy him PlayStation dollars. Oh, that one came out perfect the first time. If we could only be so lucky. Here's the fun part. Oh, God, I'm getting it off the street. Oh, yes, we got it. Kind of all shaky. I think I need to eat something. Oh, you're using my paper. <laughs> No, it's my paper. I paid for it. No, I got so, this. Yeah, that one came out good. So anyway, here we go. They all came out beautiful. Well, almost all of them. This one kind of looks a little off, but it's all right. Get it out of the way. 
So there we go. I will be end up, I will do another video where I am actually lashing one of my clients so you can see it actually going on to the eyelash. And if you have any questions, of course, you can ask me. I have no problem answering anything, even if it's embarrassing because, yeah, we've all been there. Like I said, nobody gets this overnight. It's, it, it's really hard and it takes practice. You just, you have to keep practicing. So, but the number one thing that I should have told you in the very beginning is you need to get the, a good tweezer, a tweezer that you're going to be comfortable with. If you don't get a tweezer that can pick up multiple lashes, you are going to have a seriously hard time making volume fans. It just, it's damn near impossible for me to do, so I'm sure other people struggle with it too. So you can't use, you know, the straight tweezers for classics or anything like that. You have to get one that has, like this one has what's called a sweet spot. See, if you look at it, you see it has a gap right there. So I can wiggle back and forth, and then I can pinch it closed, and then it'll grab everything. I could pull it off the strip, put it on the lash, we're good to go. Not a lot of them, well, not a lot of them, but, you know, the, the ones that are made for classic don't really do that. They just made, they're made to grab one lash off the strip and put it on the lash. So you have to, that's probably one of the most important things when it comes to doing volume fans, is you have to get a good tweezer. Don't be afraid to spend $30 on a good tweezer, $40, $50, whatever it takes to get a tweezer that you're going to make it back in one client minimum and then some. So get yourself some tweezers. Practice, practice, practice. I suggest practicing with the longer lengths because the shorter lengths are harder to fan than the longer ones. You'll have an easier time lashing with 12, 13, 14, 15 than you will, say, an 8 or a 9. But that's about it for now. I will see y'all later. Thank you, thank you.